I will so unlike other speakers i will not dwell too much deep into um, like like kapil was mentioning i was talking to him whether the audience construct yeah the cohort here is r and d and r and d it yeah so i will not dwell too much deep into r and d space that's not my domain completely yeah i am a digital guy i am a tech guy but more than anything else i am a business guy so what i'll do is i'll try to touch upon the business aspects first and uh, then i will uh, try to go to the r and d space and i will ask my colleague also to join me subsequently when when particular subject comes yeah so uh, i am representing pharmaceutical space here uh, typically a cr dmo space a contract research development manufacturing organization uh, while that is my background that that is where i come from but i will try to limit myself and uh, be be more generic on what exactly we do how we do as a as a group yeah Uh, the session i want to make it little interactive that doesn't mean that you keep on asking me 100 questions we are limiting we are limited by time so i'll try to wrap it wrap it up in 20 minutes i'll not bore you guys much all right the topic which i chose and thanks to kapil for being, giving me the liberty was around value generation yeah value generation using digital okay all right so i'll quickly go to the first page it's not a presentation by the way it's just i'm using the slides for reference so in case there are any questions please raise your hand we will stop the flow okay so this is an image um, from world war 2 yeah uh, i'm going to start with a use case i'm going to start with a business case and then i'm going to do, go to the topic exactly so this was a plane every time a plane will go in the world war 2 it will come back and those red dots you see are the bullet marks yeah so these are the bullet marks which the uh, the then team actually analyzed that okay these are the places where we think that the uh, the armor should be made stronger because they are getting hit more right so the data point here what they collected was the planes which are coming back are getting shot in these different regions yeah and they wanted to make a better tougher armor for for that plane so that it it can withstand all those anti air guns anti aircraft guns uh, used in the world war 2 yeah despite of making that armor stronger the planes still kept on getting shot down okay now it's a it's a riddle okay i'll not give you the answer to it right away i want to create some kind of a suspense so that you guys are there with me till the end i'll tell you the solution towards the end okay all right so with that thought i think i will now go into the depth of the subject uh digital i keep on hearing and this is a very loosely used term term nowadays called digital transformation generative ai network effect uh and i can go on and sense and so forth so is it a hype or an impact that is the first and foremost question which most of us have i would say now it is it is not only used it is abused everywhere you go there was a conference in singapore my ceo called me up and he was mentioning that it's talking about digitalization digital transformation and generative ai it's a pharmaceutical conference and they are going to talk about generative ai in the entire conference i could not find a single ai llm model it was all about the buzz yeah so for the reason i kept this page whether it's a hype or really we see impact so uh, just a quick stat from sorry from mckenzie this is a report which i was reading on the flight um, january 9th report so there is around 60 billion to 110 billion dollars is the value generated by generative ai in the pharmaceutical space yeah uh, i can give you the link as well you can refer to that but see this is just generative ai and i'm sure many of us don't even know the difference between gen ai and pred ai or the ml models yeah so just wanted to give you a context that impact wise if you look at it impact is there it's just we how we need to interpret it yeah how we are able to find out those use cases in our business all right so uh, my slides today my agenda um, the reference pages rather whatever i've kept here is quite simple just two sections first section is about the uh, business context of dna i usually call it in my in my teams dna in digital and analytics and the second section on the other hand we will try to dwell deep onto a road map of digital transformation and this is where i'll touch upon r and d space as well yeah so let me quickly go to the first section and this is uh, one of my favorite because like i told i'm more of a business guy than a tech leader so uh, first of all let's start with the purpose we know the vikas who just left before me from arti industries he started rightly he was talking about what is the purpose what is the mission what is the vision of the company right so i think this is an excellent start for all of us at the conversation side what is that 
purpose we are trying to solve for. Everyone in this, in this room has a purpose. Every day, uh, what drives you? What keeps you up at night? Or what wakes, what wakes you wake up and go to that workplace again and again? So for me, the purpose is to meet unmet patients' need, who is sitting across, maybe across the borders in East Africa, who is not getting the right medicine on time, and at a reasonable cost. So my purpose, which drives me every day to the office, is to make sure that the nth, the last patient in East Africa is getting the right kind of medicine, whichever he deserves. Yeah? So that is my purpose. And like, likewise, all of us in this room and the organizations we serve for have some purpose. Right? Uh, no digital tech or no systems will be, will be there if we don't have a purpose to serve. Yeah? All this uh, digital technologies will come and go. Technology has never been a problem. The problem has always been the, the service which you're trying to do for the humanity. Yeah? So that is my purpose. I hope everyone has a purpose in life. And the organization we serve for, let's reflect back on the, onto that purpose and then try to build our digital roadmap. All right. Uh, the way I look at businesses these days are typically into three buckets. These are my three buckets, and I will dwell deeper into it. And then I'll talk about how digital and analytics is helping us to cut across. First one is reach out to customers. Second one is the customer satisfaction. Third one is productivity. Now the first one, if you look at, I call it as hunting. Yeah, so we go and hunt for the customers, right? That's called hunting, typically. The second one is, in a way, farming, wherein I have a farm. I continue to cultivate or harvest on top of it. That's the second part. And the third part is around productivity. Now, productivity is where all these initiatives on uh, automation, on digital transformation, on making sure that we are doing more with less, all come into play. Again, there are measures. I am not going to dwell deep into it. Um, again, these are metrics which usually everyone tracks. And I assume you guys are also tracking it. I track it very closely with, with my um, CEOs. So reach outs, how many reach outs we do, what is our CAC, uh, how do we improve our NPS, how many re repeat orders we are getting, and finally, how are we doing more with less, being more productive. Um, I would argue the third bucket is also influencing the other two buckets. Yeah? Like if I go and tell in the market that, hey, look, I'm using a best-in-class electronic lab notebook, and I don't use uh, paper-based notebooks, right? Because I'm trying to make sure that the compliance is 100% at all point in time. Yeah? So I'm, in a way, inf able to influence the first bucket and the second bucket as well. Right? So the messaging, what I'm trying to leave here on the, in this group is, the messaging has now changed from 1 to 3 to 3 to 1. Right? So that is the change which we are seeing in the industry. And the conversations in the boardroom has also changed to a, to a level that people are actually asking that, hey, look, have you taken a scorecard on digital? Uh, this, the chief scientific officer of my company takes a scorecard of digital, and he sits with me on a quarter and reviews the scorecard, which is a drastic change. Earlier, uh, CIO will not find a place on the board on the board meeting, right? Nowadays, we do. So that is the difference which we are seeing in the market. All right. So like I like I mentioned, I'll start with the purpose part of it, and then talk about what digital and analytics is going to do or is doing in this particular space. Uh, now I'm going to the the subject which is around the digital transformation roadmap and. I actually, uh, I was actually constantly relating to what Atanu said, and to also uh, what David said, and also to what Andreas was mentioning. I think, see, most important thing is, not all the companies are at the same maturity level. Someone spoke about the journey from a paper-based system to a system where they are recording something. Someone spoke about, rather than doing an on-prem setup, I'll directly go to a cloud, which so is Signals Cloud, right? So, the, every organization on this planet is at a different maturity level. Yeah, so there is no single lens which you can apply and, and calibrate all of these organizations at the one single platform. Not possible, right? So for that reason, I think it's important that we pave a path that if I want to go to a digital transformation journey, what it would be looking like, all right? So this is a framework which I usually uh, follow, and this is a lens with, which I always use for each and every process uh, wherever I, I'm talking or whenever I'm leading a project. So there are three steps, rather. Yeah? The first step is around making sure that we are fixing the foundation. The basic systems of the world are there in place. Yeah? Your accounting systems, your procurement systems, your finance systems are there in place. Next is called something like digitize the core. Now this is where we talk about pick up a vertical, digitize it. Yeah? And the third layer is around digital transformation. Pardon me for the colors. It might not be reflecting that, that easily for you to see. But yeah, the last layer is called digital transformation. This is where the data starts talking to each other. And those insights will start coming in. Yeah? Now, someone will argue, why is AI not there in this? So you pick up any tech. It is lying in these three buckets. 
Yeah, you pick up a generative AI, which is running on the large language model. Yes, on the third bucket, absolutely. You pick up a signals notebook, probably lying in the second bucket. You pick up the SAPs of the world, the oracles of the world, you, the third, the first bucket. Yeah, so everything, every system we do, again, someone spoke about a system of innovation, system of differentiation, separate system of record, everything falls under the same bucket. Yeah. All right, I'll go to the next topic and then I'll come back. All right, so this is the journey to actionables and I will ask uh, my colleague Praveen to come and uh, let us know. So Praveen leads our science, digital science initiatives and Praveen, maybe you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So before getting into this slide, I'd just like to uh, give a small riddle here. Like now, do you know what is India's biggest data science company is selling currently? Any cases? So it is selling paints. So uh, it is into actually into construction business. So uh, the main point over here, which I would like to make is the data which is generated every day. There's humongous amount of data which is generated in healthcare domain. And what are we doing with the data? So most of the cases, the data is used for archival purpose. The data is not generating anything as of now. The main reason is that most of the data which is getting recorded is in a paper-based format, or it is digitized format. Here, I would like to sensitize one thing. Uh, when you see this, the last line over here, the roadmap of how do we digitalize the data is that the, as of now, we are in the physical form of data recording, which essentially means that once a data is generated, uh, the data is just converted into PDF, which is a digitized version, but not a digitalized version. This data can be used, but is not a proper way. When you're talking about the data analytics here, any data which needs to be ingested into any kind of algorithms which is capable of generating new set of compounds or new set of molecules needs to be in a structured way. There, wa there we come into digitalization of the data. So what essentially it means is Whenever you're talking about recording a data, it should be a seamless flow from the source. The data should be in a structured way. And that is where we are talking about more structured data here, rather than recording the data in the manual forms. Most of the R&D centers is still using the digitalized version of the data rather than going to digitalized to a digital version. The major aim of the healthcare industry should be that uh, current the visibility is the product is generating a lot of data. But the next aim should be that data should be able to generate new set of compounds, which will yield a lot of value to the customer meet. Yeah, thanks, Praveen. So uh, I think one point what I would like to elude here is Praveen talked about digitization and digitalization. The, the journey doesn't end there. Yeah? This is where you start making sense of the data and start drawing insights. And from insights, finally converts to actionables. Those actionables drive your digitalization journey back. It's a circle. It's a vicious circle. Yeah. So just to give an example, um, if I want to see number of experiments done by my scientist per month, per FT per month, if I don't have the data, I'll not be able to get that data, that report immediately, right? Plus, that will, that will be a leading indicator for me that, hey, for a certain period of time, the productivity has come down. Now, how, uh, how do I make sure that productivity completes, comes back to the top? Yeah. So the data is actually giving a leading indicator or a lagging indicator so sometimes to make those actionable insights. Yeah. So that is the journey what I think from a data perspective we are all um, on to. And I'll talk about the data to AI maturity level as well. I have a slide for that as well. Yeah. Okay. So like Praveen mentioned, um, there are certain key processes around all our organizations. And I will not dwell deep into this as well because again, too busy slide for the conversation. And I can see a lot of faces are already sleeping back again. Um, so the first one, the first row is around R&D. Second row is around supply chain. Third row is around manufacturing quality. Fourth row is around sales and transportation. Yeah? So you can pick up any area. And you can look at first digitization, digitalization rather. And the second one, how do I make sense of the data? Yeah? We are generating data at every level. How do I make sense of the data? How do I convert that into actionables? Is something which is applicable in each of the four rows which are mentioned here. Yeah? I'll not again go to detail to it. So, yeah, so this is the data to AI maturity uh, chart. And I felt it's quite relevant for all of us. Yeah? First of all, what we do is we, we die with the data. Yeah, and I call it as data tsunami. So the first one is manual data drudgery. 
Yeah, the second level of maturity is where we are saying death by dashboards. We have dashboards all across the company, and I'm sure half of the dashboards are not getting used also. You are dead by dashboards. Third is you use data to tell story. Yeah, that something happened, then because of that, some causal effect happened, and because of that, some changes were able to do. So that is a storytelling exercise. Then you start building intelligence on top of the data. Yeah, by making simple ML models or certain um, um, certain indicative models. And towards the end is the transformed organization. This is where currently the generative AIs of the world are. Um, I would actually argue with someone in case they say that, okay, I have a full-fledged Gen AI use case running in the, in the company. POC level, yes, we all are there, by the way. Uh, generative AI use cases are driven by large, large language models, right? And there are a lot of such models. Which, one, which model you are using? What is the accuracy? How are you measuring the accuracy? Right? All those questions will start coming in. So that fifth level of transformed organization is a little long shot, moon shot, I would say. But yes, we are going there. We are going to get there soon. All right? So this is on the data to AI maturity. Uh, one use case I wanted to touch upon, and uh, uh, while this has very nuanced subject, and you guys are experts in this, and I have not talked too much detail on R&D like I mentioned. Um, so what happened was this is a typical drug discovery cycle where we start with some 50, 50 lakh compounds, then goes to 500 in the preclinical development, then clinical five. Finally, the result is one drug gets approved. And the timeline is there below. It takes up to a decade, 11 months, 11 years, uh, 12 and a half years, and so on and so forth. Right? So, and the cost also is there. So this was the typical cycle, how, how typically any drug discovery will go. Thanks to AI, the, the whole timeline has crashed now. From a decade to it has become one week. Yeah? Because those models are there. Um, now, there are multiple models which, which work, which will help you to solve for the drug discovery problem. And the drug discovery timelines is getting crunched as we, as we speak. Right? And there are, there are certain uh, metrics which, which we track for, for measuring the accuracy of these models and how, how do we do it. Uh, again, uh, offline subject, I will, if you want, I can spend some time with you guys to talk about it. But yeah, overall, from the drug discovery market perspective, the CRO business has started, again, booming. The industry is booming at an 8.5% CAGR. Yeah? And um, overall, I think the segment is around $55 billion uh, by 2032 for small molecules. Large molecules are not factored in here. But again, the drug discovery as a cycle, the timeline has reduced drastically, is what I'm trying to um, explain. And all thanks to the data. Now, Actually, I was uh, reflecting back on this particular page, and Praveen and me were, were discussing that I even in sports, data plays a, a big role. Yeah? Um, I remember one of the matches where I think uh, uh, Bumrah was bowling to um, one of the Pakistani batters, and he was bowling in swing. Yeah? Uh, to those who know cricket, he was bowling in swing. Four balls he bowled in swing. This batter actually defended all the four balls. I think one ball he hit for four as well. But the fifth ball, he switched to off spin. He, he switched to out swing. What happened was the batter was expecting that, OK, this is where I'm going to come in. And the data which was fed to Bumra was that this person has a, has a weakness of out swing. He continued to play in swing for four balls. Fifth ball, he, play, he balls an out swing. There you go. There's an edge catch in the caught in the slip and the person is gone out. Right? So that is the power of data. So in drug discovery or in sports, any field you go, the data is going to be there to stay. And that will drive your future organizations as well. All right. I am lacking time, so I'll quickly go back. This was my two-point agenda. All right, now I'll come back to the case. Um, you remember I told you that this is the World War II plane, which used to get shot multiple times. The team actually analyzed that, why these particular uh, bullets are there, and they tried to make, it, make the armor stronger, but still the planes, planes were getting shot. So there was this gentleman called Abraham Wald. He was a mathematician, um, and he was a Hungarian person. So he found out that the places, the, so you are analyzing the data for the planes which have come back to you. Yeah? And then you find out, OK, these are the hits. Have you ever realized planes have not come back to you? Why they have not come back? The problem statement was, how do I solve for my planes which are getting shot down? Right? And you are solving for the problem that these planes are coming back. So these parts are already strong, isn't it? However, the engine, the cockpit, was, a, was the area where you see there was no hit. Yeah? And no one actually focused on that. When you see the data, data is not, not two-dimensional. 
Yeah, data has multiple dimensions. You also, if you, the moment you mix up your success and your failure, both data together, and try to look at it from one lens, you will be able to draw right inferences. And that has helped that the the World War II to make sure that the engines and the cockpits were made stronger as compared to any other wins. Yeah, so that was the case I just wanted to leave you guys with. Uh, based on this, I think um, since it's a 30 minute session, I wanted to complete in 20 minutes, but I wanted you guys to take, take away with some framework while you go back. And a uh, good, good way to remember things is to use some kind of acronym. I couldn't make an acronym, so I just made it on my own. So it is called UAHM as a framework. First and foremost, like Praveen mentioned, use case first, then technology. Yeah, let's not solve for the technology. Technology is always there to, to be and help us. Second one is analyze the problem thoroughly, and analyze the requirement thoroughly. Uh, third one is think holistic for the solutioning. And the fourth one is three metrics. Uh, usually, I measure every project into three metrics. One is implementation metric, next is adoption metric, third is a success metric. What is the benefit realization we have actually achieved? Yeah? And finally, most foremost important, which I felt uh, throughout my career, is the mindset. Yeah? Like Praveen mentioned, that there has been manual documentation. No, no company is at the same maturity level. The mindset is a problem. Wherein we are trying to influence our business teams many times, or we are trying to influence the CEOs of the world that, hey, look, if I invest into a system of record, I will be able to draw insights two years down the line. Right? And then your MLs of the world will start kicking in. That's a runway of two years at least, right? So the mindset change is important. Yeah? It drives from top to bottom and bottom to up as well, both sides. All right. So with that, that was my last page, and I would like to summarize it here. And then, um, if at all time permits, we'll do a question answer. Otherwise, I'm OK. So we spoke about the business case. We spoke about the purpose. We spoke about three buckets, hunting, farming, and productivity, or uh, profitability. Third, second rather, we spoke about the roadmap to digital. Uh, we spoke about three levers, fix the foundation, digitize the core, and digital transformation. We touched upon the journey to actionables with the example of ELN. Uh, we spoke about AI-led, assisted drug discovery process. We spoke about the learning from World War II case. Um, we also spoke about the UAHM framework, which I think is relevant for all of us. Um, finally, the mindset change is extremely important at all organizations level. It starts with top to bottom, bottom to up as well. Um, and one last passing comment before I hand it back to Kapil. We are in the business of value generation. Yeah. Uh, digital teams, rather specifically, are in the in the business of value generation. Value generation can be in terms of revenue, direct top line impact, or it can be in a way to save uh, manpower, yeah, or to make sure that the productivity improves day by day, yeah. So we are in the game of value generation, uh, and I hope that we all realize that the purpose why we have why we are here and why we are doing for our organization is understood, and all the initiatives which we take are in line with that purpose. Yeah, that's my time. Thank you.